So what's the treatment of dengue? So there is no specific antiviral drug. Like, you know, we've been talking about COVID, there is remdesivir, which is not very effective, but it is a specific antiviral drug that is used for treating COVID and uh, Ebola, etc. For like HIV, we have specific antiviral drugs. But, but many viruses, unlike bacterial infection or parasitic infections, we don't have specific, viral, specific antivirals or effective antivirals. For dengue, again, there is no specific antiviral that is available. Okay, so we need to avoid, see, when patient has fever, we usually use paracetamol, but NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, aspirin, they're more uh, effective compared to paracetamol, right? So, but in dengue, we know that many, some patients after the initial five, six days, their platelets may drop and they may have bleeding tendency. We know that NSAIDs can reduce platelet function. So dengue patients are already at risk of thrombocytopenia, so it's better to avoid drugs which can also cause result in platelet dysfunction. So that by giving NSAIDs, we may be increasing bleeding tendency, right? So we need to monitor BP, their hematocrit, platelet count, level of consciousness. What is most important dengue is hydration. If the patient is taking orally, lots of oral fluids, if the patient is sick, we need to uh, give IV fluids to ensure that uh, they don't have hemoconcentration, that their intravascular volume is uh, replenished. Because I have told you in dengue, what happens is all the plasma from the intravascular space uh, seeps into, leaks into third space, extravascular, ex extravascular space. So we need to give more fluids to maintain intravascular volume to maintain the blood pressure. So when do we <clears throat> uh, need to give blood transfusions in dengue patients? In only dengue patients with overt bleeding, we need to uh, give them blood transfusions. There's no evidence that prophylactic platelet transfusions improve dengue outcomes. Okay, so how do we prevent dengue? Since there is no effective antiviral therapy and it's only supportive treatment, uh, you know, that is in the form of fluid resuscitation and if the patient develops, develops you know, respiratory failure, giving oxygen, okay, if they develop <coughs> renal failure, then supporting sometimes hemodialysis and then platelet transfusions and other blood component transfusions hasn't been required. It's only symptomatic and supportive treatment. So the best thing is prevention because dengue, it's a very common illness, but is associated with significant morbidity. Patients can die of dengue. Patients die because, because of the shock syndrome, because they, uh, even the patients do not usually die because of bleeding, because in most hospitals, we're able to uh, give them blood products and then arrest bleeding to some extent. They usually die because of dengue shock syndrome and multi-organ dysfunction. So prevention is the best bet here. How do we prevent dengue? Uh, the, the first thing to do is vector control by various means, be it chemical uh, or biological environmental, prevent uh, mosquito bite. And a vaccine is in development. In some countries, dengue vaccine is available, though it's not very effective. In India, as of now, it's not available. 